that's some Shakespeare for y'all. The boy spoke it plain, but true. If you got a belly full of food, then you'd have no more appetite. If you got an ear full of music, well, it might soothe something a little bit deeper. About six months ago, the Spanish flu had landed on our ports, took out thousands of folks. We were all cooped up inside day after day, month after month. No saloons, no soda pop shop, no school or church. The local lodges transformed to temporary hospitals. It was only now we began to claim back our city that was taken from us by the precariousness of death. Or so we thought. I was playing my first set back at the old absinthe house with Jelly Roll Morton on keys. It felt good to be back on bourbon. A deluge of song roaring through the streets from tall open doors. Walking to the rhythm of the devil's music. <laughs> That's what the old folks were calling it. Those hundred-year-old green doors never looked better. As I walked on into a place I can only describe as hugging an old, old friend. Something felt off that night. I could feel it in the crowd. Now, of course, I attributed it to the flu. Everybody wasn't used to being back out, sharing liquor, dancing together, right? Well, wicked words spread thick like molasses. One stroke from the door on up to the stage. Eddie, you're here. Thank God you're here. Did you see it? She unfolded today's Times Picayune from her pocketbook and shoved it towards me. Would you please read it to me, Eddie? Everyone is terrified. <clears throat> Esteemed mortals of New Orleans, they have never caught me and they never will. They have never seen me, for I am invisible. I am not a human being, but a spirit and a demon from the hottest hell. I am what you Orleans and your foolish police call the Axeman. The Axeman. Go on. When I see fit, I shall come and claim other victims 
I alone know whom they shall be. I shall leave no clue except my bloody axe be smeared with blood and brains. At 12.15 on Tuesday night, I'm going to pass over New Orleans. In my infinite mercy, I am going to make a little proposition to you people. Here it is. I am very fond of jazz music. And I swear by all the devils that every person shall be spared in whose home a jazz band is in full swing at the time I have just mentioned. If everyone has a jazz band going well, then so much the better for you people. One thing is certain, and that is people who do not jazz it out on that specific Tuesday night, if there be any, will get the axe. Eddie, listen to me. I'm telling you, this is the man who killed... Kathy and Joe. ...and the Court of Miglia's infant girl just last week. Manny Fink says Rosie and Charlie are still at Charity Hospital recovering, but their baby was laid to rest. A sin! They live at the end of my block in Brenda, Eddie! This man has been at it all year long. The sitting ducks we were inside. Superintendent Mooney and his men stopped their investigation to take care of this flu. Now, I don't have a record player. I don't know anybody who does. Here, on Tuesday, you have got to play for our lives. I looked down at my saxophone like a drowning man at a life raft. Axeman, who was he? Was he here? Hey, Eddie! I jumped about a half foot off the floor. What, you nervous? We gotta make some money. Jelly handed me a cup of water. Boy, my ears were playing their drums as I looked over at Joe like he was a ghost. Don't tell me you're all worked up about that axe man, are ya? Course not. I just haven't been out in a while's all. It wasn't true. While the flu was gone and left here, it was merely a palimpest of a different kind of death. Oh, the horse crap. That's what this is. <laughs> Who's to say the guy who wrote it isn't just a jazz player that wanted his damn job back? But what about the murders? The Cordomiglia family, Catherine and Joe Maggio, right above their grocery store on Magnolia Street. There's been others, too, killed the same way they were. Yeah, lots of people own axes, lady. And I say most of them don't plunge them through somebody's head. I felt my knees buckle beneath me as she ripped the paper from my hands and ran back through the crowd. Well, I wrote a little song for him. Joe, come on now. What? He wants music? I'll give him some music. Before I could protest, old Joe took that glass back out of my hand. This next one goes out to the mysterious X-Man. Don't scare me, Papa. Folks started doing what they always do in a time of uncertainty. Ignoring the problem till it goes away. And much like the flu, I don't think this was going away neither. Thank you very much, everybody. Lock your doors tonight. Give a warm welcome to the Boswell Sisters! Joe Davila tipped his hat at me as he left the stage, smiling his young boy toothy smile, happy as a pig in shit with the raucous he caused. And as he weaved his way through the women that flocked to him, I scanned the crowd. Was I in the same room as an axe murderer? Everybody, why? 
heebie-jeebies. I think we all had them about now. I packed up my sacks. Hey, hey, Eddie. Uh, where are you going? And got the hell out of there. There was just a little sliver of a moon that hung above the Crescent City. Light trying to fight its way through the fog. The haze cast shadows that stood like giants on the stones. Obscuring faces, trapping their sounds within the density of the gloom. I made a quick left on Canal, a shortcut to get me home. Home. A place just a few hours ago I thought was keeping me safe. But a flu and a madman? I suppose you don't know if either's in your home till it's too late. I ended up over on the corner of Magnolia and Upper Line, by the bones of the old Maggio Grocer. I can still see Kathy taking a broom to the porch, whistling a tune. You'd open the door and smell the sharp cheeses and Italian sausage while Joe stood proud, keeping that countertop spick and span. I'd go inside twice a day, every day, for three years. Mr. and Mrs. Joe, that's what we called him. This whole world changed in the blink of an eye. I stood there staring at that shop. And a shiver shot up my spine to my skull. The same man that heard their screams wants to hear some jazz. The Big Easy ain't no such thing anymore. As I walked on through Central City, I noticed I wasn't alone. Inside every window of every house, a fire was burning. Figures pacing back and forth, protecting what was theirs. Paper Row began winging his way down Tolandano Street <laughs> like a bird with a worm. Is that a saxophone, sir? Sure is, bud. A Busha True Tone. An alto. Oh, I want to play music like you one day. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Why is that? Uh, my mother says uh, folks like you keep us safe from the axe murderer. I knelt down and looked him square in the eye. Now, why would your mother tell you a thing like that? It says so in every day in my papers. My father reads them. I took one out of his hand, and sure enough, there it was. Jazz bands will blare for Axeman. Jazz bands will blare for Axeman? 
I crumbled it up and threw it into the sewer. Hey! That'll be two cents! My family's gotta eat! And why on earth are you trying to scare people? Get them all riled up? Because it's my job. Next day, I found myself at the Dryad Street Library till closing. I wanted to read all I could about the Axeman, his victims, what he did to them, how he did it. And as I walked the long road home, I replayed those murders in my head. Quickly, I turned the corner and ran round back to my shed to see if there was any attempt at entry. That... That is where I keep my axe. With my right shoulder, I barged the door open. There it was, cradled in the knot of an oak tree stump, catching a glimmer by the light of the moon. I grabbed it before anyone else could, and I held it in my pulse and palm. Right in front of me stood my home. Home. The place I now would wear like a suit of armor, wondering if there was a battle ahead. I tiptoed over to the back door and slid my key into the lock. Turn the metal knob that stung like ice and warily pushed. Hello? With my left hand, I put my sax down, still gripping the axe with my right. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw the curtains were billowing in the breeze of an open window. Shit, I thought to myself. Did I leave it open before I left tonight? Slowly, I walked through the house. The floorboards moaned beneath me as I opened every closet, every door. Nothing. Nothing now. I poured myself an entire rocks glass full of whiskey, threw it back, and you know what I did next. I did it again. Did it so many times I just slid on down to the floor, axe still in hand, and I waited. I waited 
for the Axeman. side and stood there, towering above me, a grim reaper with a scythe that stretched across the entire room. I lay there, panting, watching my fate etched as a shadow on the ceiling. As it grew closer, closer, and What do you want from me? What do you want? I woke up. (sighs) Covered in sweat and bourbon. Nose to nose with my saxophone. I knew what I had to do. I knew what I had to do. to wish our President Wilson a speedy recovery. It proves this flu don't care about our politics, our color, or our creed. But working class folk like you and me don't have that White House luxury. What is keeping us alive? Watching out for us. The devil and the deep blue sea. A 
man with an axe? What? I'd be loath to give a speech and not mention the man of the hour. He's why you're here tonight, huh? And you. You too. Why? Old Joe DeVillo wrote a song about him. You all bought it. So he cashed in on someone else's tragedy. God bless America. Yeah. God bless America. Don't know about you. But that's exactly the America I've come to know. Greed. Chaos. Fear. In a way, our axe man is an amalgamation of all those things. The dark underbelly of the American dream sent here to wake us up a bit. So tonight we toast to the boogeyman on bourbon. Whomever many men he may be, here's a little bit of music, and even a little bit of thanks. You taught all of us a little bit about ourselves. Play off. I said, play all.